Hi everyone, thanks for watching today. My name is Taylor and I have with me Chad. Um, he is our preparedness coordinator at the health department. So thanks for being here today, Chad. Yeah, no problem. So we're here to talk to you about summer safety. So Chad, what's the main concern for summer safety? So the big thing with summer safety is obviously going to be heat. Uh, summer's approaching pretty quickly. It's going to be, I think the first day of summer is June 21st, technically. Mm -hmm. um, especially here in the south, we experience a lot of high temperatures. So extreme heat is technically classified as anything that is 90 degrees or higher. Uh, for usually an extended period of time, it's usually about two to three days. Um, you can experience about 90 degrees or higher. Um, especially here in the south, we can sometimes get into those, you know, that three digit 100 degree plus, especially later in like July and sometimes in August. Um, and the big thing about extreme heat is, you know, most people think of, you know, disastrous weather as being hurricanes or tornadoes. Uh, the big thing is with extreme heat is, is actually the number one, has like the highest death rate among all other disasters. And that could be because, you know, whenever you hear about a hurricane warning, you're going to go inside, take shelter or a tornado. Um, with extreme heat, people kind of take that a lot more lightly, I think. So people are still out in the yard shoveling mulch or cutting the grass and don't really pay attention as much. Uh, to the danger because it kind of creeps up on you versus a tornado that's going to be right there at that moment. Right. Yeah, he doesn't really seem as much of a threat as some of the other things that you mentioned, so I can see how people wouldn't really take that very seriously. And sometimes, you know, uh, some weather outlets will actually warn you if there's going to be some extreme heat. I know uh, I was at the beach a couple weeks ago and they actually had two or three days where it was going to be about 94 degrees, so they kind of gave you a warning. Um, but, you know, weather's unpredictable in general, so sometimes you're not going to get that warning, so just be on the watch for, you know, if you are doing any kind of laborious activity outside. Okay. So is there a certain age group that really needs to watch out for this more? Yeah, so uh, with anything, typically your older adults and children are going to be more uh, susceptible to things like extreme heat, uh, mainly because um, young or middle-aged adults have a much better system as far as keeping your body cool. Um, and older people and children have a much harder time regulating their body temperature whenever they're exposed to extreme heat. And also, you know, hydration plays a big part into it as well. Okay. Um, so what are some of the heat-related illnesses that are common in the summer? So the three big ones are going to be your heat cramps, um, heat exhaustion, and the worst being heat stroke. Um, heat cramps are kind of like they sound, it's kind of just like a cramp. Typically it's going to happen in the stomach, arm, or leg area. Um, usually if you just, um, they recommend you drink like a Garrett or Powerade that's going to have like a sugar salt solution in it um, and just kind of rest and getting out of the heat into the cool. So the cramp, you know, it's usually in a couple of minutes of discomfort, typically, typically with the heat cramp, so it's not that severe. Um, with the heat exhaustion, you're going to have more of your, um, um, you're going to be sweating a lot more. You could turn pale, dizzy. Uh, most people experience nausea or headache. Um, the best thing to do, like a heat cramp, is to find a cool place, typically air conditioned if possible, and to just kind of you know lay down. And rehydration is probably the biggest thing um, with the heat exhaustion. And that's one of those that kind of creeps up on you if you're out in the yard, you know, for two or three hours out in you know 94 degrees, and you're not probably hydrated because typically I, th I think people have a misconception of how. You know, dehydration can happen so quickly. I think most people think they drink, they drink like a bottle of water, and I think they're good for four hours out, you know, out in the yard or wherever, doing whatever kind of work or um, kids playing. And when in, when in turn, you actually need a lot more water than you think uh, to re to rehydrate properly. And then the last one being heat stroke, which is the most severe. Um, typically, you know, it's when your body temperature gets above 103 degrees. Um, you're going to have a higher heart rate. You're going to uh, you're going to have hot and dry skin without any sweat at all. So versus the other two having you know pre you know heavy sweating, especially with heat exhaustion, heat stroke, there's going to be no sweating typically. Um, it usually has dizziness and confusion. And the best thing in that scenario is to call um, 911 because it can even cause you to go unconscious. So if you're with somebody, 911 is the best option. Uh, which I also want to talk a little bit about um, humidity in the air because here in the south we have higher humidity than other places out west. Um, so humidity is typically the, how much moisture is in the air, uh, which makes it harder for your body to sweat. So whenever you sweat, it evaporates to keep your body cool. Uh, with high humidity, it makes your body, the sweat's not going to evaporate, making your body have to sweat more to try and cool your body down, which is why uh, typically heat has more of an effect on you when there's high humidity. So if, it, you know, if it's uh, 94 or 5 degrees outside with a humidity of 60, the real feel is going to be 121. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what's called the heat index, which is, you know, it takes more of, even though it's 94, it feels like 121, so it's going to take more of a toll on your body overall. 
Gotcha. So it can be a lot hotter here in the south just because of humidity. humidity. Yeah, you know, out west in Arizona, you know, it's like 100 degrees, but it doesn't feel as hot as here because the humidity is so much higher here. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so you did talk about like high heat index. Um, if you do see like a heat warning on the news, what should you do? I, mean, I think the best thing to do, you know, if you can stay inside an air conditioner, that's obviously the best thing to do, um, or limit your time outside. You know, some people do have jobs, like a landscapers have to work outside, you know, that's their job. Um, so, you know, you really want to limit, you know, the amount of, like, wear, like, light clothing. You know, I wouldn't wear, like, you know, sweatpants and a hoodie outside at 96 degrees. Um, but limit, you know, wear light clothing, stay indoors. Now, like I said, I think hydration is the big key here. I think a lot of people miss out on how much your body, you know, gets dehydrated so quickly. So I think, you know, drinking water, you know, every, you know, other hour or something can help you if you're going to be working outside in the heat. Okay. So maybe even, like, a Gatorade, like you said. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have to be water, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know a lot of times, you know, we run into the store really quickly and we think it's okay to leave our pets or our children with another supervised adult. Um, should we really be doing this in the summer? Yeah, so that's grabbed a lot of media attention in the past few years. You see more of the media parents leaving their children in, in the car. Um, so just to give a reference, you know, in a vehicle, if it's, you know, 80 degrees, or let's, let's say it's 90 degrees outside, um, it only takes 10 minutes for a 20 degree increase in temperature. So it can well get over three digits inside the car in just 10 minutes. So I think a lot of parents think, you know, they leave their kid in the car seat in the car, the windows are up, they go to the grocery store to grab, you know, milk or bread, and it ends up turning into a longer list than they thought of, or they meet somebody from church and they talk to them for 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the, the car temperature is going to continuously increase you know it can be you know fatal uh, if they're left in there for, for too long so it's not recommended that you leave your child in the car if you have a pet you know some stores like Lowe's will let you take the, you know, walk the pet inside the store but if you cannot at least roll the windows all the way down for a pet but for a child I would not recommend leaving them in the vehicle for instance you know really at all if it's hot yeah it sounds like it's gonna be way hotter in the car than it actually is yeah there's, you know very little time you can increase you know 20 degrees 10 minutes 20 degrees you, you know spend 20 minutes, you're looking at 40 degrees higher inside the vehicle, which, you know, that's fatal to a child. Yeah, that's significant. Um, so now that pools are starting to open, um, do you have any tips about pool safety? Yeah, so pools tip, you know, most public pools open around Memorial Day, uh, but really the person, you know, and public pools are typically safer than a personal pool because you're going to have the lifeguards and staff at the public pools. Um, so for like a personal pool, it's, you know, it's recommended they have the, like the appropriate barriers, like a fence or something, because I mean, a lot of people live in neighborhoods where there's children and you don't want to be responsible for some, you know, a child, you know, possibly getting injured in your pool. Um, also, you know, at a public pool, you have lifeguards. Um, and I think, you know, especially when children are young at personal pools, parents do a pretty good job of watching the child. Um, but as they get older, I think that that becomes less of a concern, especially like, like specifically late elementary to middle school. I think parents sometimes get the mindset of they'll be okay, they're old enough to get out if they get tired, uh, which, you know, a cramp can happen to anybody anytime. Um, it's like a kid can get tired, you know, and, and drown. So it's always good to have a designated, you know, parent or person, you know, as a pool watcher um, to make sure that everybody's being safe in the pool. Um, also, you know, as of late, um, typically the um, people have invested in using the drain entrapment protection devices. Uh, so I know sometimes the drains them on the pools can be strong. Well, if you have a child that's, you know, learned to swim underwater and stuff and they get too close to the drain, you can actually suck them to that drain and not let them be able to get back up for air. Uh, it can cause them to, to drown. So a lot of people are uh, recommending getting the, uh, I believe they're called make sure the anti-entrapment drain cover is what it's actually called okay. but most pool stores like a holiday pools for example sell those kind of devices and also the last thing being sunscreen is going back to extreme heat mm -hmm. sunscreen's a big thing i think a lot of people think they apply sunscreen one time they're good for three hours laying out in the sun which is not the case you typically want to do at least spf 30 uh, and reapply every hour is what i would recommend Okay. Yeah, I think that's a common misconception, you know, especially if you're not getting in the water, you think, oh, I'm okay, but... You know, like, they're, they're outside for seven hours, they just apply one time. It's kind of like, you know, I like to use this like wax on a car, it still degrades as you use it over time. Right. Well, do you have any other tips for us to stay safe this summer, Chad? I think that's... The only, the only, the only thing I can think of associated with summer is uh, uh, thunderstorms, mm -hmm. but we can do a show later about that, so... Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. No problem.